Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about Rule 9, which is the narrow channels. Okay, let's start off with a first paragraph. A. A vessel proceeding along the course of a narrow channel or fairway shall keep as near to the outer limit of the channel or fairway which lies on her starboard side as is safe and practicable. So let's have a look with a couple of examples. Basically means you stay on the starboard side of the channel. This makes sense if you think of a head-on situation where you've both got to alter to starboard to pass down the port side of each other. So in a narrow channel or fairway, just stick to that starboard side, so then when you're passing other vessels, you will be passing port to port. B. A vessel or less than 20 meters in length or a sailing vessel shall not impede the passage of a vessel which can safely navigate only within a narrow channel or fairway. This basically means a short vessel or a sailing vessel shall not impede the passage of a vessel which can only navigate in channel or fairway. C. A vessel engaged in fishing shall not impede the passage of any other vessel navigating within a narrow channel or fairway. So the subtitle difference between these two is a fishing vessel shall not impede the passage of any vessel, whereas a vessel of 20 meters shall not impede the passage of a vessel which can only be in a channel or fairway. Let's watch this video. So going back to our diagram with the vessel which can navigate only within a channel or fairway, we have the small vessel approaching and we have a sailing vessel approaching. Both of these must not impede the passage of the vessel in the channel, but they are free to go in the channel. As soon as they're navigating within the channel or fairway, a fishing vessel cannot impede their passage. So the fishing vessel cannot impede the passage of any of the other vessels, but the other two vessels cannot impede the passage of a vessel which can safely navigate only within the channel. D. A vessel shall not cross a narrow channel or fairway. If such crossing impedes the passage of a vessel which can safely navigate only within a such channel or fairway, the latter vessel may use the sound signal prescribed in Rule 34D if, if in doubt as to the intention of the crossing vessel. So back to our diagram, this time the green vessel is wanting to cross the channel or fairway and the white tanker can safely navigate only within the channel or fairway. The green vessel cannot cross if the crossing impedes the passage of the white vessel and the white vessel can sound five short and rapid blasts if, the, if she is unsure as to the intention of the crossing vessel. But remember, rule 15 will still apply. This can still be a crossing situation. We're talking about do not impede, which goes back to rule 8, which does not relieve the giveaway vessel of her obligation to keep out of the way. E. In a narrow channel or fairway when overtaking can take place only if the vessel to be overtaken has to take action to permit safe passing. The vessel intending to overtake shall indicate her intention by sounding the appropriate signal prescribed in Rule 34. C. First paragraph, the vessel to be overtaken shall, if in agreement, sound the appropriate signal prescribed in Rule 34. C. Second paragraph, and takes place or takes steps to permit safe passing, if in doubt she may sound the signal prescribed in Rule 34D. Rule does not relieve the overtaking vessel of her obligation under Rule 13. So let's have a look to a couple of examples. In this example, we've got that white tanker moving within channel or fairway and a red vessel coming up behind. And the red vessel wants to overtake. If she wanted to go down the starboard side of the tanker, she could sound two prolonged blasts followed by one short blast to indicate, I intend to overtake you on your starboard side. Likewise, if she wanted to overtake on the port side, it would be too prolonged followed by two short blasts. For today, we're going to assume that she's going to sound too prolonged followed by one short blast, so she wants to overtake the tanker on the tanker's starboard side. If the tanker is in agreement, she can sound Morse Charlie. Prolonged, one short, one prolonged, one short blast. 
If she was not in agreement, she could sound five short and rapid blasts. But today, she's going to be in agreement, and once in agreement, she would take steps to permit safe passing, which would involve moving out to port to allow more space on her starboard side so the red vessel can come up and overtake. Obviously the red vessel is not relieved of her obligation of keeping out of the way, so she's still got to keep out of the way of the tanker until she has finally passed in clear. But this part of the rule allows her to ask for a bit of assistance given that she's in a narrow channel. F. A vessel nearing a bend or an area of a narrow channel or fairway where over vessel may be obscured by an intervening obstruction shall navigate with particular alertness and caution and shall sound the appropriate signal prescribed in Rule 34E. G. Any vessel shall, in the circumstances of the case admit, avoid anchoring in a narrow channel. So let's take this example, this time the orange area indicating an area that the vessel can't see past, so she does not know if another vessel is approaching. Of course, she's navigating down the starboard side of the channel or fairway, but as she approaches the bend, she needs to sound one prolonged blast. If there was another vessel approaching, she would expect to hear one prolonged blast in reply. This is just giving her an indication there's another vessel there. But, in addition, she needs to navigate with particular alertness and caution, given that she cannot see what is round the corner. This bit is kind of common sense anyway. And that brings us to the end of Rule 9.